Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex. It is time now for the Ramble. The Ramble going until midnight Eastern Standard Time. And uh, as we do once a week, we like to check in with a guy that we just really enjoy talking to. A couple of weeks ago when we interviewed our next guest, who is... Well, so our, actually, our only guest. Why am I saying our next guest? The show just started, and uh, I haven't had a guest before this. Anyway, uh, Larry Bubbles Brown uh, was, uh, you were sick. Yeah, I had that, uh, I had an, it was an allergy attack. I wasn't, uh, I haven't had that flu yet that's killing everybody. Yeah, yeah. I get a bad allergy attack once a year now. Just once a year? Yeah, usually about this time of year. So. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. And allergies are caused by apparently having too, uh, a good immune system that uh, it starts to attack things that actually doesn't hurt your body and goes into hyperdrive. And so it's uh, very uh, disgusting. It's very, <laughs> it's very disgusting. Oh, yeah, just a constant, just unbelievable snot. And eyes are watering. You And you just feel, like, really tired, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, uh, uh, do you take uh, what do you take for it? Do you, you take a, a, antihistamines, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, I, <laughs> it was kind of funny because the antihistamines, and I heard they're actually something called a histamine. <laughs> so he's, I guess the histamines are what causes a problem, and the anti. What if, what if you took an antihistamine and a prohistamine, <laughs> uh, or an antibiotic and a probiotic? A probiotic, exactly. <laughs> um, um, I take probiotics every day, and the reason I take them is I had uh, irritable bowel syndrome, and I found by taking probiotics, my IBS pretty much went away. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, I always wondered if you let's say you were in a room and you had a uh, humidifier okay because you wanted humidity in the room right uh-huh good cool okay got me so far now you buy a dehumidifier <laughs> and you put them in the same room together does that negate the whole thing i think you'll have a thunderstorm <laughs> yeah, i often wondered about that i often wondered about that i just you know well, we were talking about movies the last time we uh, talked, and uh, I, another movie I saw recently was uh, Vertigo. Yeah. Which, which I just wondered, because you lived here when it was filmed, probably. I don't know. Well, I know. Uh, actually, let's see. Was I, I must have, yeah, I must have been living in San Francisco, but I don't remember, like, the newspapers going, oh, Hitchcock is filming here today or there. It is maybe one of the quintessential San Francisco films, though. Um. You can find most of those structures. The place where she lives in that movie, Kim Novak, uh -huh. it's still there. And the people who, I guess, rent it or own it or whatever put a big, giant stand-up of uh, James Stewart in the window. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but um, all those places, you know, you, it, uh, there, a, lot of them are gone, a lot of them are gone. Um uh, but you can pretty much, uh, through that movie, just follow San Francisco. It's just a great San Francisco film. Yeah. And it, what's also great about it is, you know how in a lot of movies, you see a movie of San Francisco and somebody's riding a bike and he's going down a hill in San Francisco and he turns a corner and he's like 10 miles across town. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know the, the gaffes that way. And he... Um, um, was very good at pretty much following San Francisco. When you go down a street and turn left, you know, you know, you know the streets. It's just, it's terrific. And yet, none of the spoken parts of that picture were done in San Francisco. They were done in Hollywood. Uh -huh. um, 
what they would do is like they're standing outside her house talking and there's some cars behind them. That's just a screen in back of them. But, okay. but the long shot is them. And in some cases, not even them. It's stand-ins. Uh, but, but when the, the scene where she jumps into the bay, I believe they were actually in San Francisco and shooting that. Okay. So it, it, in those days, they made most of the movies in the studio, mainly because uh, it was it was not the worst idea in the world. You 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 had more control over your product when you did that. So uh, that's uh, you know it was uh, pretty pretty cool. Um, well, it used to be considered not a great movie, and now it's be, it's really run up on some of these movie lists now, like this. Number no, it, 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 I, I, I'll disagree with you. It was always considered a great movie. Here was the problem. It, it, what happened was it wasn't seen for years. Uh, here's And there's a reason for that, too, which I'll tell you in a moment. But it wasn't seen for years, so, you know, out of mind, out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. And so when it would come to, like, great Hitchcock films, they'd remember all the ones that were currently playing on television or that you had access to. But the, what Hitchcock did is when he was at Paramount, the last, I think it was seven films that he did for Paramount, he owned. They simply were a releasing agent. And um, when he left Paramount and went to Universal, where, by the way, Universal at that time, in order to get him to come to Universal, which was one of the smaller studios, um, gave him 51% of the voting stock in Universal. Jeez. And to this day, I think the Hitchcock family, if they own it, is still the largest shareholder in, uh, a single shareholder in, in uh, Universal, or what is, I think, Comcast Universal now. Anyway, the point is, he owned all these films, and so as an annuity... The family decided, and he decided, not to release them. So pictures like Vertigo, I think Rear Window was part of that. I think uh, Man Who Knew Too Much, the remake, was part of that. Uh, Trouble with Harry. Um, I'm trying to think of what other films in that in that group uh, made the list. The, the Birds? Uh, 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 no, The Birds was at Universal. Uh, oddly enough, the last picture he ever made that was released by Paramount was Psycho. And then when he went over to Universal, he gave it to Universal. So you'll see the Universal logo first these days, and then you will see the Paramount logo right after that. Really? Where it oh. says a Paramount release, yeah. Um, but he held back Vertigo especially, and you just couldn't get a copy of Vertigo. You couldn't see Vertigo for years and years and years. And then one day, the family decided to let Universal, who was now the company they had interest in, release Vertigo, and it was released to DVDs. And that's when every and back in, I think they put it back in the theaters for a short time. And that's exactly when it started. Everybody went, oh, what a great movie this is. You know, so um, uh, that's the reason why for years it, it disappeared and nobody paid attention to it. Um, so that's the, it's a history. Why do I know these things? You know everything about it. And I love the, my favorite uh, uh, score of music is Bernard Herrmann. Yeah. Who did uh, that and uh, Taxi Driver. Yeah, he did. Well, no, he also did. Well, he did. He did a whole bunch of Hitchcock pictures. He did Man Who Knew yeah. Too Much. He did Rear. Didn't Man. he do Citizen Kane? Uh, yes, he did Citizen Kane. But he did a, a whole raft of Hitchcock pictures, maybe about seven or eight of them, uh, in which he became identified as Hitchcock's composer. I mean, that that sound is kind of what you associate with Hitchcock movies, at least in in that later era. And Psycho, of course, was brilliant. Yeah. Because uh, Hitchcock released it as a black and white film. And so Bernard Herrmann, being the intuitive sort that he was when it came to composing, said, oh, yeah, it's a black and white movie. I'll do a black and white movie score. I will only use violins or strings. And if you listen to that score, there are no trumpets. There's no brass. There's nothing like that. There's just nothing but strings. That's true, yeah. And, uh, uh, in fact, Hitchcock, that film, Hitchcock made, I think, in about three weeks. 
and he used his television crew, the crew that did his television shows, uh, and um, um, they were the they were the the people who you know who did the picture, and um, uh, he brought them in because he felt they could work fast. And he wanted to see how fa- he wanted to make a B movie is really what he wanted to do, and so he got the crew that he knew could work the fastest, which was the TV crew, and they made this movie in about three weeks. Well, Psycho was maybe Hitchcock's biggest box office success. Hit the theaters was a massive success. I remember he did a great advertising campaign on it, in which he would not allow anybody to watch the movie unless they were uh, after the first seven minutes that you had to be there before the first seven minutes they would deny you admittance to the theater so that made people die to get there on time Uh and to see this movie and what's it all about and it was a good idea too because today we think about who well who goes to the movie after it started after seven minutes that's not the way we go to movies in those days you would go to a movie in the middle of the picture and then you would sit there, and then you would go through the next feature after that, and then it would come back on, and then you would look at your friend and go, is this where we came in? <laughs> you know, And then you would leave. <laughs> That's the way we watch movies in those days. Yeah. So, so he made it so you had to go from the very beginning to watch his film. And he was very strict about this rule. And, and that made people really die to see it. So that was great merchandising. But what happened was it was such a success that when he went to make his next film, Paramount said to him, or whoever, I think maybe it was Universal by that time because he had gone over to Universal, well, why don't you try and make it for the same amount of money you made the last one? Why don't you start, you know, he said, I'm never going to do that again. Because he said they just, they, they suddenly, they wanted to lowball me on everything. Saying, hey, you made a movie for $300,000 or something like that. Do it again. And he said, no. You know, he said, I, I, would, I was never going to do that again. But it's interesting, the cheapest film he ever did, the most inexpensive film yeah. he ever did, was his, literally his most successful film. Well, that's incredible, shooting a movie in three weeks. Yeah. And, um, um. Uh, you know, to this day, it is such a classic that you can watch it again and again, and you and you know how it ends, but it still drags, sucks you in. There are movies that suck you in. Uh, Godfather sucks you in. Um, Casablanca sucks you in. I swore to people, and I've asked them this question, and nobody can really answer it. Tell me how Casablanca starts. Yeah, you. I would not know. See? Know and why I don't can. you know? Because <laughs> usually you watch Casablanca because you notice it's on. Uh-huh. And so it's already gone past the beginning, and so you're into the movie. It starts off with a narration. Some announcer going, Casablanca, blah, 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 you know, where people... Uh, you know, uh, uh, dropping off point for the notorious, and bl- and then it goes into a bunch of people on the street, and they're being picked up by the cops. And then we finally, after a little bit, get to Rick's Cafe, you know, Cafe American, and um, but that's where we most people pick it up. They think that's the movie, and it starts earlier than that. Huh? Yeah. You know. So it's, uh, you know, uh, again, it, it's one of those movies that uh, people have only seen half of, <laughs> so or three quarters of. But it's a good three quarters. Oh, it's a great three quarters, a great movie. <laughs> and it was, it was completely an accident that it was as great as it was because they had another ending. And at the last minute, they decided to simplify it. And... Um, they 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 shot this other ending that wound up being the final ending where he walks off and says, you know, this is going to be the beginning of a beautiful friendship, start of a beautiful friendship. Uh, uh, but they didn't, they, in fact, they didn't even know whether she was going to stay with him or whether he was going to go with, uh, you know, she was going to go with uh, uh, Paul Henry, Henry. Um, and uh, 
I think it wasn't until the last minute that they decided how to end it. Sometimes they were writing these scripts as they went along, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then they turn into masterpieces, and and it, it, they're they're accidental masterpieces. It was just supposed to be another, you know, Warner Brothers feature that would last one week in a movie theater and then, you know, go into obscurity. Because they made these films to stay in the theater for a week, and if they were really successful, eh, maybe they'd do two weeks. But it wasn't like they stayed in for a month. Wow. You know? O only things like uh, Gone with the Wind were intended that way. The roadshow pictures, you know, the ones with the intermission in the middle. Um, they don't even make long movies with intermissions anymore. What was I, what did I see recently that my bladder was starting to burst? Uh, because it just kept going on and on and on and on, and then it wasn't that good a movie either. But I went, geez, you know, this thing needs an intermission. I think it went on for three hours and 15 minutes or something like that. Yeah, yeah very few movies. The last thing I saw with an intermission was Lawrence of Arabia. That was... Yeah, I'll tell you, though, sometimes the studios slaughter movies. Uh, one of the greatest films, to me, if you were to say, what is your favorite film of all time? I think I would not have to think very long because I would come up with the, the same picture keeps coming back time and time again when I'm asked that question. And to me, the best movie I've ever seen is Once Upon a Time in America, Sergio Leone's film. Wow, I've never seen it. Oh my God, you've got to watch it. It's an hour. I'm going to watch it now. It, it, it's it's three fun. hours and forty-five minutes long. Make sure you get Jesus, that. Really? Well, what happened when when it was released? The studio went too long, and they cut it to like two hours. And there is a two-hour version of this movie in which they change the ending and everything. And it is just—I have a copy of it just so I can go back and look at it. But it was just horrible, just horrible. And that's the one they kept releasing to video release for years. And then finally one day said, hey, you got to release the European version. And then the three-hour, 45-minute version came out. And it is one of the most wonderful movies you've ever seen. It is just, it's about Jewish gangsters. Uh, James uh, James Wood, Robert De Niro, uh, a whole bunch of other people. Uh, it was the first picture that Jennifer, what's her name? Oh, God. Uh, the Academy Award winner. Uh, but she, uh, Jennifer Connelly, I think, her name, yeah, that she was ever in. She, it was her first film. Uh, and it is just a wonderful movie. And I could watch that over and over and over again. And uh, but if you watch the move, the version they cut down to, it is just ghastly. I mean, how anybody could do that to a movie is beyond me. You know, but they do it because they're idiots. They do it all the time. Yeah, yeah they're idiots. Um, and uh, you know, and and Leone. I don't know if you watch a lot of Leone, but for years I never watched Leone because number one, there were two reasons why I didn't watch Leone. Number one was that I thought that all these spaghetti westerns must be stupid, okay? And then the second reason was they never released them in widescreen. They were always pan and scan. And all of a sudden there was this film called Once Upon a Time in the West that he did that I was watching, and because they couldn't do it any other way, they had to, like, window, you know, a uh, letterbox, the picture, for the first oh, 15 minutes of Once Upon a Time in the West, which is maybe one of the best short films I've ever seen, that first 15 minutes. And you see the composition of his camera and how he composes the shot. And you go, this is wonderful. And then all of a sudden, when you get to the main part of the film, it goes, it goes uh, 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 what do you call it, pan and scan. And you go, Why? You know, and finally they released it in, in full wide screen. And you sit there and you just gasp at the way he shoots these films and the composition that he puts into them. And so at that point, I started really catching up on Leone because all the stuff was now coming out in, in wide screen on, on video. And I, he was just 
he was one of the greatest filmmakers that ever lived. I mean, really? Because I haven't seen yeah. much of his stuff. Yeah. You've got to go back. You've got to go watch Once Upon a Time in America because that's a, 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 you know. And then I would say my second choice is The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, and Once Upon a Time in the West with the baddest, meanest Henry Fonda you've ever seen in your life. Really? Yeah. <laughs> hard uh, to imagine. <laughs> it was the only time he ever played the bad guy. You know, he always played the good guy because uh -huh. he was so wholesome. Wait yeah. till you see him in this movie. I mean, Leone puts a tan on him and ages his face a little bit. and make, it, He just, it's wonderful film. Uh, and Charles Bronson is the lead in it because Clint Eastwood wouldn't do it, which is shitty because Leone gave him a career. Uh, yeah, he made Eastwood, right? He made Eastwood. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, watch watch Leone. I mean, if you don't watch Leone, you've missed some of the greatest films ever made. And Once Upon a Time in America, if I had one last film that I had to watch because I was dying and I wanted to watch one last movie, that would be it. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's even got, it. you, you remember Seinfeld, of course, right? Mm -hmm. uh, George Costanza's mother is in it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's her name? I can't remember her name now. Uh, Estelle. Yeah, Estelle. <laughs> she 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 uh, she plays uh, the mother of this girl who one of these little guys at the time is trying to woo, and uh, she, uh, it's just I don't want to spoil it for you. It's just go okay. go rent it, buy it, go online. Well. I don't know if you have online. No, no. Um, let's, I'll just, I'll just. You don't have this. because you don't have the internet. Basically, you have only dial-up. You can't right. do Netflix on dial-up. You can't do that. No. But I, I got to come out to California and get you into this century. Yeah, when you come out here, you're gonna set me up because I just drive me crazy. Yeah, I mean, you should get a high-speed internet into your apartment, which wouldn't cost you that much any anymore. I mean, you can get. Uh, decent speed internet for like twenty bucks a month or something like that, maybe less. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, not really. I I see forty and fifties. So yeah, but I'm paying twenty. I'm paying twenty for the dial-up. But that's for very. Oh, that's for very high speed. I bet I could find you uh, uh, an internet. Uh, you you got to you know. Impossible. You, do you have cable? You don't have cable, do you? I don't you? have cable. But so if I get you get if I could get something just where I could see a little video, that'd be great. Well, I mean, you know, if you got Netflix, you'd be you know, or one of those, you'd be watching all the time. Yeah, my sister got Netflix, and she said it's amazing. Yeah, it's it is amazing. But there's other stuff that does, you know, there's just part of basic cable like Turner Classic Movies, where uh, that's a treasure trove, and it's doesn't they don't run commercials at least not in the traditional sense. They don't break into a movie. For a commercial, they have that much respect for films, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I can't, I can't imagine not having the internet, not having cable. Hell, I've had cable for thirty years, thirty-five years, and you've never gotten it yet. I know. I'm living like a luddite. You're not living like a luddite. You're living living like a hermit for crying out loud. Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> you, you got your little cabin in the woods called San Francisco, <laughs> and you've got no internet. Wow, that's amazing. I guess there's no way anybody could steal your identity. <laughs> really, I'm serious. You have I've got set, good security. You have set up the best firewall of all time. You have just <laughs> eschewed a, a, a technology altogether. I think that's wonderful. Let's see, and it's, I didn't stop to think about it. Yeah, you don't have cable, so you don't have internet, so you don't have Netflix, so you don't have. You only have dial-up. I've got a flip phone. Uh, 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 do you? Yeah. <laughs> How old is it? I think it's like ten years old. <laughs> Sometimes, like if you try to send a text message, where you have to push the button three times to get each letter. <laughs> it takes like an hour to say hello. <laughs> Oh God, I love you. I just yeah. love you. You are the best, man. You just, uh, you just, you, you've, um, you've just said, "Go fuck yourself, society." Pretty much, I'm the analog man in the digital age. Exactly. 
That's what we should call you, Stop Bubbles, Larry Analog Man Analog Brown. Man. I like that, yeah. <laughs> or we could short it to AM, you know, <laughs> Analog Man. Hey, look, we've run out of time here, and we're doing this on the Internet, but, of course, we're talking to you on your telephone. Yeah, so I'll we, never hear <laughs> You'll never hear the show. Uh, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. We do it every night. It's on video, which if I got you up and started, we probably could have a video of you so we could well, then you show you here, on video. Yeah, because uh, you're the person I – you're my go-to guy. Yeah. Hey, listen, Larry Brown, thank you so much. And thank we'll, you. Uh, the time just flew by. It went, yes, and we'll, uh, we'll do it again in about a week. Sounds good. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Larry. I love Larry. Uh, Who doesn't love Larry? Everybody loves Larry. Don't they? I think they do. I do. You should. Everybody should. Anyway, let me let me clear a few things here. I got to do a little bit of work here. Do you mind? Do you mind? I just want to just uh, I want to clear the lines here so that we don't have any extraneous uh, callers here. Hold on a second. I got to. What happens? I I wish I could tell you what I have to do here, and I should have done this earlier today, but I didn't. So, fuck me. You know, fuck me. Anyway, hey, listen. Uh, the lines are open. We use uh, GabNet. Uh, uh, live as our ID on Skype if you want to call us. If you don't know what uh, Skype is and you don't have Skype and you want to use Skype, then might I suggest that you go over to our gabnet.net page. It's gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net, N-E-T. And over the right-hand side of the page, it tells you how you can get Skype. It tells you what Skype is, how you can call us on Skype. It even has any. It, it, it even has a button, literal thing you can uh, click on, that will dial it for you to get to us. And uh, new users and new uh, viewers and uh, new people. I better turn on the on the air light, otherwise girlfriend will think she lo- wasted money on it. Uh. uh uh, let me see here. Um, uh, you know, um, where was I? Uh, <laughs> oh man, I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting for callers. Anyway, what happens is you just you can use that, and you can just click the calls. And tonight's a good night to call. Why? Because Phil isn't going to be here. The all clear is out now, and those of you who don't like to call because Phil calls. You can call and don't feel intimidated, okay? Anyway, how's my beard doing? Is it showing up at all? I I, I decided to grow a full beard, uh, mainly because it pisses girlfriend off. She, she, she didn't like beards to begin with, so why she fell in love with me, I have no idea. And neither does she, really. Uh, I think she questions it every day of her life, but, you know, whatever. So, uh... Uh, you know what she does? You know what she does to me. I, I'll tell you. Um, give us a call, folks. I'm waiting. Uh, she she says to me that I talk nasty to her. I talk kind of like cranky towards her, and I do uh, I do that. And uh, that's because I'm a cranky old man. No, but the the reason I do it is if she says ask me something and I give her an answer. And then she asked me that question again like 10 minutes later. I kind of, my answer is not as nice as the first time I answered it. Like, no, uh, we can't do it that way. And my second time, it's, no, we can't do it that way. So, I mean, I don't mean to make her think that I'm talking down to her or talking at her or whatever. Uh, but it, it just, you know, it's kind of like, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But she, but she, he got very mad at me again tonight, you know, and uh, and then all of a sudden, like fifteen minutes later, she's sweet as a bug. So I, I don't know, but uh, whatever. Also, she works, I don't, and um, that's rough on me uh, because I like working. Okay, I like I like being the 
person making the money in the house. And now I find I'm not, so I have to like do my part, and I become like the house husband. I make the bed every day. Uh, if the cleaning woman doesn't come over a particular week, I find myself cleaning the house. Um, whatever. So anyway, I'm waiting for a call. Somebody, nobody wants to call. Hey, I can, you know, I can turn this off and just go to sleep early. I really could do that. But I swore I wasn't going to beg. I swore I was going to swear off begging. Okay. So I'm not going to beg any longer. Anyway. So where was I? Oh, so uh, anyway, so she gets mad at me because I because I kind of I get cranky in my answers, and uh, and if she's listening and she is, I'm sorry, dear, because you know I love you dearly, and it's not that I'm I'm just trying to make be emphatic the second time around, okay, so that you will remember it, okay. So anyway, but she's been really good, you know what she's been doing. She she's taken the, the lead on this whole move we have. We're we're getting rid of our old um, uh, health insurance because we suddenly found out that my union has a health insurance plan, and because we're a union and we we're, I think we're something like thirty thousand strong, right? A member of SAG after the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television Radio Artists, and uh, they they have a plan. And so uh, we're we're switching over to that new plan, and uh, we're it, it looks like it's going to be okay. But hey, look who's here! Oh, we got. I mean, uh, you see, I push this. Bu there it goes. I pushed the button and it didn't go immediately. Hello, Tom Yamaguchi. Hey. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. I hope um... that new computer, your picture looks great. Yeah, I actually, I'm on my bed now because I, so I won't have that light behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That look better. Yeah, 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 right. uh, yeah. Anything, anything next to me looks better, you know. So. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, how, how are you doing? Thank you for calling. Oh. I know it's a fill free night, so that was your encouragement to call. Yeah, a while. I've been meaning to call. I, you know, just to, as I said, to 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 really try. Try this out and see how well this this new computer's working. No, oh, it works but beautifully. But I have a cold and it's sort of like meh. Yeah, but it, it, it but if it's really uh it really the picture's great and you know, mm -hmm. it, you 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 finally in the uh, in the twenty uh, first century. Well, my other computer was twenty ten. Yeah. So I think I replace them every every seven seven eight years. Well, I have one. I have one here that's twenty ten, but it's it's a really heavily built Mac, and it works beautifully. The thing I'm using here, though, is a uh, is a PC that my wife had at her office, and they got her a new one. And so this thing's got to be like four or five years old, but it's working beautifully. You know, uh, you'll find that a newer computer today will last you maybe longer and better than one would have that you bought f five years ago. You know. Yeah. They, they yeah. Well, what I bought in 2010 was pretty cheap. It was under a thousand dollars because that's all I could afford. Well, you time. know, a good you can get a good computer today for well under a thousand dollars now. Yeah. You know, it, it's like they're giving them away. <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, I mean, when you talk about power and things like that, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, uh, our lines are open if anybody else is listening. Uh, yeah, one thing know. I wanted to do. Yeah. Let me go back to YouTube. I muted, I muted YouTube uh, this time, so we wouldn't get, you know, an echo. Yeah. But I had I've liked the video, and now I'm going to share to my. Hopefully, I'm going to share to my Twitter mm -hmm. so that people will know that we're on, and that might get you some more viewers. Oh, yeah, sure. Anything okay. would help. Hey, Renee, I saw she just wrote, yes, it is a feel-free Wednesday, so where the <coughs> fuck are you? You know? Mm -hmm. Come on. I need you. need you tonight. Uh, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden, on Thursdays and Fridays, all of a sudden, people... People call like crazy. It's weird. So I I'm, I'm assume you have a laptop because of the uh, orientation with which you're using it. Like when it when it moves on your leg or whatever or on your lap, yeah. uh, the picture moves. So yeah. let's see. Yeah. I'm just typing in right now. What are you What are you typing? Uh, I'm with 
at Gabnet Live. Yeah, yeah. You. Let me see here. Let me go over to Twitter and see if it if it's, it's not there yet. Okay, um, I'm, um, I'm waiting. Oh wait a um, minute! There it says Tom Yamaguchi. I like the YouTube video, and you showed uh, our last night's show. Mm -hmm. or, okay, it, so now yeah. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can tweet this. Yeah, go tweet it. Let's see here. Um, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, no, oh, I, oh, here it's not saying that. It's not. Okay, it's doing something different. Yeah. Okay, let me try this again. If you say, folks, this is really boring watching people send Twitter uh, notifications, <laughs> uh, you might try calling the program. Had, what? One of your uh, user had Tandle on there, too. So, right now. Hmm. So, let me see if we can get us some more people on tonight. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, there it goes. See? I, well, let's see here. No, it, wait a minute. That's not the new one. Let me see here. Uh, I'm, uh, yes, I'm with GabNet Live right now, blah, 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 and then you have a, a link to it. Uh, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, although that's for the seventh, so let's see if the link works. That, well, today's yes, the, the link is it? working. The link, that link works, absolutely. Okay, the seventh. Yeah. Today is the seventh. So now I've got video all over the place. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah, good. Okay, so you, 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 so maybe we'll we'll even get some more people. Anyway, uh, but we we need callers now, folks. And so. you have five hundred subscribers. Y did we finally hit five hundred? I know we were four ninety nine before. We were here is five hundred subscribers. Four hundred when we four hundred ninety nine when we first went on the air. Okay. Uh, he okay. Hello to, uh, to Tony Magno, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Tony? Huh? I'm tired, actually. What? I'm a little tired this week. I don't want to hear about that. I know. <coughs> I know. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I'm ex I'm exhausted, but I'm here. You know why? Because there was some guy, some asshole, I don't know <clears throat> when, who coined the phrase, the show must go on. Who and, said that? I have no idea who Stop said that, but I would like to find him someday and choke him by his throat. I just, you know, I because <laughs> every time we go, we go, yeah, the show must go on. Well, I don't know, you know. Could be called off ever, because I just don't feel like doing it, but, you know. But I'm here every night. That not that ama Doesn't that amaze you? The only time I didn't do this show for any period of time was when I was in the hospital with my, uh, with my kidney stone, uh -huh. which put me out of commission for about, about a week, you know. But outside of that, you know, if, and if I could have somehow done it from my hospital room high on some very nice drugs, I would have done it, you know. But they give you something. I, I got to do drugs one time. <laughs> you've never done. I actually want to hear something said. I, 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 I would like to say I'm amazed that you've never done drugs, but no, I'd be amazed if you had. Yeah. You know what happened, Alex? My cousin, uh, yeah. we're going to have a 50th anniversary for our elementary school. So one of these kids who I wasn't really friends with him. I guess kind of like knew him from like elementary school from one of my classes. I don't even remember yeah. classes. He yeah. actually overdosed. My uncle told me. He says, so and so overdosed. I said, really? I'm really not surprised. I haven't seen the guy in like 40 years or so. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, I never got so, involved. So, in that, so what? So. You want to go to the party to see the guy who overdosed? Well, actually, no, I Is that... to the, it's in May. It's for the elementary school, 50 years. Yeah. So my cousin and me and my sister are going to go because I want to see my old teachers. I hope I hope a couple of them are alive still. Yeah. Down, down on the corner of the screen, let me just put something up here. So it's only like a couple there we go. Around. See that, folks? That's GabNet Live. That's the idea you use to call this program. And there's a phone number there if you feel like using the phone. Oh, here comes here comes Renee. Ah, yes. From Hawaii, ladies and gentlemen. Renee. Hello, Renee. Hi. Hi. I, um, sorry to interrupt you, Tony. I took a photo of Mauna Kea and it's got snow on it and it just got snow on it within the past 30 minutes it's just that I can't figure out how to get you the photo well first of all we can't even get your photo oh sorry about that it's... well probably because I should switch the iPad no no, right? no don't don't use the iPad that that works really well 
So far as putting a photo up on Skype, I'm trying to remember how there is a way of doing it. Like when you're talking to somebody, you can send them a picture. Look, look at that, folks. In California, it's nighttime. And the East Coast, it's nighttime. Look at her, ladies and gentlemen, in Hawaii. The sun is still up. I want to go to Hawaii. It, it, it looks nice. <laughs> Very bright sun. Very bright sun. And by the way, her house isn't normally that kind of mess. She's just been doing, having work done on it. So, Right. It's a mess. My boxes. Yeah. Though I did find the rest of my files for my test so I could start on my taxes. So I'm pretty happy. Oh, so you can start your taxes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that's it's the next really big thing. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they should yeah. only have taxes once every four years. Well, you know what? If these guys were really the Republicans that they should have been, they should have done the flat Well, tax. you see, uh, can I say something? And thank God Phil is in here because he would get <laughs> apoplectic if I said this to him. I see no reason why the American public, you and me, should have to pay any taxes at all. Because, because if they simply charged the uh, corporations what they should and not allow them to get away with murder, you know, like GE not having to pay any taxes at all. And in fact, I think they got money back. Um, I think that we wouldn't have to pay. You know, it's just that we we have to pay because uh, every, we let the corporations get away with fucking murder. Oh, and it's worse now, right? Because they're going to have a permanent tax cut, uh, yeah, and they'll soon coming for your social security. And, 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 and you know, and you know what they're going to do with all that money? They're going to give you a big fat raise, right? I wish I could use it. I want it so bad. Am I wrong, Tom? I mean, we could. We we don't necessarily have to pay taxes. The amount of taxes that the average individual pays in total is minor in comparison to what uh, what the corporations pay. In other words, the well, country doesn't depend on our money as much as they do other money. I don't I don't I don't I don't mind the idea of making a um, lower corporate tax rate if that is money that's going to go back into the economy and hire more people. But you know it's not. But I definitely I definitely believe in in uh, in the in the higher rates for for personal income taxes i think i think the wealthy definitely uh should be paying more in proportion to to, to what uh, to what they're you know what they're making and if they want to save money they can plow more stuff back into their business yeah and on the other end i i'm i'm with nixon i i i believe in a negative income tax i think that that people should actually uh get paid to uh to uh, uh you know to yeah. uh you know, if they don't make enough money, the the government pays them to bring them up to the above the poverty level. What do you think? Uh, we just got joined by Patrick. What do you think, Patrick, about taxes? A living wage. I mean, uh, well, I think we pay too much. I think we get taxed on the wrong shit. Um, what else do you want to know? We get taxed on tax. Here's what happens. All right. It's you pay your taxes every year, right? Whatever percentage that may be, depending upon your income status, right? And then, every time you go to a store, you get taxed another eight percent. Well, that, that's why I don't I don't like the death tax. I mean, like if if I would left money from my grandfather. Oh, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't. I I agree with you. I don't agree with the death tax either. Yeah, I mean they already paid taxes. They already paid taxes on that money, right? That that tax, the estate tax, applies to so few people. I mean that is the biggest scam. Renaming it the death tax. I mean that's that's your uh, Lunson, uh, you know, you know, message framing in, in action. Uh, actually, uh, once again, this is a lot of this is is money that uh, that was unearned, and 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 why shouldn't why shouldn't somebody to, uh, you know, pay taxes on it if it, if they didn't earn it. Well, say if I gave somebody a gift of money, they don't have to pay tax on it if they gave you money, right? It like depends on the dollar. So, like Tony, if I gave you twenty grand or so, right? But if I give you over a certain dollar amount, yeah, I have to write a letter 
you oh. put it in your tax you put it in your ta income tax stuff saying that you were gifted money and that you're not going to have to repay the money back so they might consider that hopefully they consider it a gift well i don't know and why but i i was i was willed uh, uh, uh half of a person's uh a photo uh library in other words a photograph she took uh, over her lifetime and uh seventy five thousand dollars to promote to you be used to promote it and to you know archive it and so on and so forth all right and, and you I, pay ta state taxes on it i asked my business manager he says no i don't have to pay taxes on that that's right the estate tax does not apply to most people inherit very so, few people. So, in other words, if you property. inherit from an estate, you do not owe you do it not owe taxes on anybody. that. It, it it shouldn't apply to anyone at all because the money's already been taxed. Yeah. There's no point in taxing money that's been taxed, no matter how rich they are or how poor they are. That it's just a horseshit concept. Yeah. Well, I don't consider. I I think it's horseshit that uh, that uh, that the wealthy are not paying their fair share of taxes. Yeah, well, I think a flat tax would would take care of that. No, no, because the the poor of a, a completely flat tax, the poor would be paying a higher proportion of their income in taxes. It would be very unfair to low income people. Could we? Could we? Well, could we say that it starts unless, at a certain amount? Unless, yeah, unless you you have a cutoff way high enough. That you know you you have a, a personal amount a certain like maybe twenty thousand the first twenty thousand is untaxed or something like that maybe yeah. you could have that, that but otherwise that's, it's I would, completely unfair. And I I agree with you. Anybody, you know, they're earning twenty fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, of course the percentage is, is going to be higher on them, but it should be just like any other sort of well, it's what Trump did. God forbid we bring him up, but the first twenty thousand dollars isn't tax. I think that's a reasonable thing. And if it was a flat tax, it should be the same thing. Yeah. And maybe you raise that to thirty thousand dollars, you know. Um, and then anybody making over thirty, you start with the flat tax. Yeah. On the other hand, there's something else wrong with the flat tax, but I can't remember what it is. But there's something wrong on the high end. Uh, and, uh, and the question is, if you do a flat tax, do you then say no deductions? In other words, uh, do, do you allow that there should be no deductions if there's a flat tax? You just, here, 10%, you, you pay the 10%, that's it. There are no right. deductions, there's no, you know, I bought, you know, keeping all your stubs. It would be actually a postcard size return. How much did you make? What is ten percent of that? Where's that ten percent? Did you did you take it out of your pay and it's it's in a thing, or uh, do you owe it to us? But that's that's all. That's it. You know, make sure we get our money, and leave it at that. I don't know that I disagree with that, but I think that yes, it should start at a certain point. We should figure out what what a living wage is, and then we allow the 10% to be taken out over that living wage. And I don't know what you consider a living wage today, but what would we say a living wage would be? I would say 35. I'd say 35, closer to that, yeah. And that's... I'd be, I'd be willing to go up to that. that that'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, that's my wage between my Social Security and my union <laughs> pension. You know, thank God my wife is working. Yes, uh, 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 Renee. The same as I, I'm about to send a file, so in case it crashes everything, yeah, be aware we have to call back. Oh, okay. What is your what is the file you're sending? I'm putting it on the in the text area of the conversation. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, I think. The people have to, I don't know how Amy does that, but I guess you have to click on it to see it. Yeah, you have to click on it to see it. But I don't so know, I don't know where I would go, I don't know where I would go for that. See, is Converse, the For the conversation side of Skype? Yeah. Oh, it's you here, it's right to, here, it's here, isn't it? 
Let me see. Yeah. There we go. And there's Renee Collins' picture. And so we, click on the little eyeball. Let me see here. Well, uh, I no, it just I I can't uh, I can't make it bigger. Uh, but <laughs> here here it is, folks. If you can if you can look closely, that is uh, that is what what mountain is that? What? Uh, it's Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea. And it just happened within the last, I'd say, about hour. So you people know now, and you can prove it. Yeah. There's snow in Hawaii. There's snow in Hawaii. Now, how do I get out of this? I don't know. <laughs> on my on my screen, I can click on the little eyeball, and it blows it up to desktop size. Okay, but I I need to I need to now make this. Uh, I need to. Uh, oh God! How do I? How do I get rid of this now? Oh, there we go. There it is. There it is. There. There we go. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, simple as so that. So it'd be really nice to put it inside the conversation, so you could have all seen it without having to go to the chat. Yeah. But I, I don't think I've gotten that yeah. far. Well, anyway, everybody, there was there was Mauna Kea, uh, and, with snow. Yeah, and it with snow. And how how big is how much snow is up there? Are you getting snow where you are? No. Oh no, I'm very close to the ocean. Uh, that's uh, thirteen thousand plus. Yeah. So yeah, it's cold up there. Actually, they had a winter storm warning for last night. They wouldn't let people up. <laughs> oh really? Which is kind of weird, but you have to close the road sometime. Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, so uh, back to taxes. Um, yes. Um, so I, I just feel that, um, I don't know, you know, I mean, it, it, why they gave the corporations this kind of tax break, I have no idea. If you think, for instance, the, our dear president in one of his speeches says, and Apple is going to spend two, $350 billion on, uh, in America. And that isn't at all what Apple said. They just simply said they were bringing back because they can now three hundred and fifty billion dollars. Now, whether they're going to spend it or not, uh, with a company that we know hoards like crazy. I mean, Apple oh, yeah. is Apple's huh? Big. What? Yeah, Apple's a big hoarder for my, for cash. Yeah, but you know, here's the deal: is the reason uh, it wasn't done during the Obama administration was just the sheer fact that. Yeah, we want you back, but we're not willing to give you that much in taxes. So what President, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, what Trump did was <laughs> said, screw it. I'm going to give you everything you want so that you'll come back and then you'll bring the money back to our country. Yeah. So he just like didn't negotiate anything and opened up the floodgates. And so instead of doing what Obama was trying to do, which was negotiate some sort of real like 23 percent 15 percent uh trump just said net nah, script y'all you get it all it's all yours <laughs> yeah it's like uh, but i mean uh, it, 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 don't the corporations benefit the most out of this country you, you mean know. the stockholders it, well also the corporations themselves you know the stockholders haven't done so well this week i just looked to see how much money i lo lost this week and i uh, um I estimated it at something like almost three thousand dollars in the last week. Um, you know, and for someone on a fixed income, a retiree, uh, it would be nice to have more money than not have that much money take, taken away from me. But then again, I made a lot of that in the last month and a half or so. So wait, you, you didn't know. get your dollar fifty-two? That, that Paul Ryan tweeted oh, about. Really? He, he took that down. That what, what, what was it about dollar fifty two? I right. heard about some tweet by Ryan. <laughs> uh, by the but what did he? What did he say? Oh, he was he was saying how great the new tax deal is for everybody, and somebody, some idiot in his group, uh, went down a sheet and said, "Okay, this group is going to make this much money. This group is going to make this much money." And so he just gave them a number, and he didn't, and they didn't filter it, so they didn't say. This person's going to make forty thousand, or this person's going to make two hundred dollars more a week. They picked the lowest one. They gave them the so the so the administration admin person or the waitress is going to get a dollar fifty two a week. Wow, and that's wow. what they texted that, out. That's great. That'll Netflix. pay for her Netflix subscription. Yeah, 
uh, and, and everybody was like, I can't believe you picked the worst thing. It's well, I'm so not, bad. you know, while you were at it, assholes, uh, yeah. why, you know, my income, my only income personally is Social Security and a small union pension. All right? Okay. Uh, you want to give everybody else a raise? Give me a raise, too. Give me more money in Social Security. I I wish was was you know, as long as you're passing out the money, hey, throw a little my way. I think under Obama, he's got my mom got a raise in Social Security. Well, yeah, there was there are always raises. There are cost of living raises that happen <laughs> just about saying. every year. Uh, Patrick, I mean, don't you think are, are you any on any kind of assistance? I mean, do you get some kind of uh, help for your medical condition? Right? I mean, besides you know Medicare or something like that. Uh, disability. Disability. I mean, shouldn't you get a raise? I don't I mean, know. Money goes up. Funny that it depends on the taxpayer. I don't know that I'm entitled to more money than what I'm making. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Now, I don't have any kids. Tony doesn't have any kids. Do you have any, Renee? Nope. Nope. And, 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 and Tom, do you have any kids? I have two. One. You have two kids. Okay. Oh, two. Sorry. I lost one. I apologize. <laughs> By the way, you know, two of these people, Renee and Tommy Miguchi, were both there when I got installed into the uh, into the Hall of Fame, the Bay Area Hall of Fame. So I just thought Are about you that. Back to, you were talking about coming back to San Francisco. Do you have any idea when that might be? Uh, no, maybe the summer, something like that. We might do some shows out there. But, so um, if I get a new iPhone, for fuck's sake... Please send it to Larry Bubbles Brown, my old one. <laughs> you know, you know something. I just, I just figured it out today. Today, I'll tell you what I bought. I bought. I'm so in love with my Amazon Echo that I bought the uh, Amazon Echo uh, Dot or Spot, Spot, Spot. Uh, I got the Spot, and it's a, it's a little round. Have you seen it? It's like that, like this, about this size. Round, round. It's got a screen in it and a camera, and uh, it's it, it it can sit by the bed. It it gives you the time, you yeah, know, nice. shows you what the temperature is outside. You can do all the things you do with Echo, and on top of that, I can even call girlfriend uh, on her Alexa app at work and do face to face. Uh, but it's just it's really great. So it replaced my clock radio. And what I had yeah, my clock really rate what nice. I had my clock radio was an old iPhone. Uh, and I have another one here that's even newer. I should right. send it to Larry. Please. Yeah, he would like it. Uh, he'd be blown uh, away by it. But yeah, yeah, he'd be blown away by it, but I'll be getting calls every ten minutes. How does this oh, work? Yeah. How does that work? Oh, yeah. Well, you learned how to dial me at least. Yeah. 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 And you're going to have to set up an iTunes account for him so he'll have email because Apple yeah. has free email. So if you set up an iTunes account or a dot .Mac account, oh, you're right. he'll be you're able right. to access that, right? You're right. If, if, if you, if you yeah. wanted to, you can set it up for him. But now, you see, what i got to do is I, I've, I've got to have somebody out there who can go out and he, he won't even he – wait a minute. Hold on a second. He doesn't even have – he has dial-up. Okay, so how is he going to get download all the apps? I mean, he can download the apps, but three years later, you will get one of them. You know. Okay, but okay, so so main so what they suggested to me when that was happening to me is that I go back to their store and do it all through their Wi-Fi. So once I got set up, then I could come home and do all the I mean, stuff. That you I have to realize when we're talking about Larry, and people heard yeah, Larry just, earlier, we're talking about somebody who is virtually um, uh, okay. identity theft proof. Yeah. There is no way anybody could steal his identity because, as far as the internet knows, he doesn't have an identity. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, so maybe we should leave him that way. He may be safer. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
Uh, yeah, if you've got if so one of those phones need to go back to the battered women's shelter, and the other one needs to go to Larry Butler's Brown. Yeah. Or the other thing that I was thinking about is that you're supposed to be able to turn your old iPhones into a security camera and leave it at home for yourself. So you you switch the dead one up or the old one up and make it a security cam. And for, you'll be able for to what? Do that. I mean, I don't have so I can see if somebody's robbing my place while I'm in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what can I do about that exactly? You, you can yell at them in your old man Jewish voice. Yes. <laughs> Keep your hands off of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I mean, uh, but uh, anyway, so I I got this new uh, this new Echo and uh, device. And, and and it's really nice, you know. Replay, but it replaced my clock radio. Okay, so now I have a, a, another another thing that I can use, and it's uh, it's terrific. I I'm very happy with it so far. Except they keep sending mess, putting messages on the screen every now and then. It keeps it's like you know saying do this, you can do this, you can do that. And I don't want that shit, and I can't figure out how to turn it off. Oh, the tips keep coming at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I pulled a fill. You pulled a fill. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. What would that be? You either okay, so you either bought something that's too expensive for what it really is. Oh, did I just hit to hit the nail on the head on that one? Huh? Oh, okay. It's related, and it's related to the conversation you were having about your voice activated. Well, you bought an Alexa. No, I bought an Echo. A what? It's going to be here you soon. You bought a what? I bought the Apple's brand new HomePod. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What a waste of fucking money that is! You know, I waste my money on the fact that I get like uh, uh, Apple TVs. You know, I hope Phil's listening. And 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 and, and, and they're like two hundred bucks, but I get the Apple TV. And the reason, but the reason I get it is so that I can observe how it operates with my shows on live stream things like that okay youtube and so on but i would never get that new home pod because it, it really it doesn't do anything more than the amazon uh echo does for what uh, 79 dollars 69 dollars well it'll also it'll also interact with my um my outdoor lighting my indoor lighting so will and, so, but so will okay. so will so will the and at some point, so will the echo the to echo. do my draperies the echo does that can do my draperies it can do do anything that is hooked to some kind of system that can be electronically turned on and off by you know wi-fi and so on well i told you i pulled a fill <laughs> you pulled a total fill because I when I saw that thing and I saw they were charging three hundred and forty nine bucks for that I thing. I for it, yeah. And I mean, and so and, and when you compare that to the seventy nine dollars and it doesn't do you know the only thing it does differently than the Amazon does and the Echo does the Echo will allow you to order on Amazon and the HomePod will allow you to order on Apple. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Speaker quality of the home pod, and that's the other reason to do this is because I didn't want to use the speakers I had. The speaker quality of the home pod and the sonar, excuse me, the sonar, yeah, the sonar it's using to map out the room is going to be way better in sound than most. I'm, I'm telling you now that I, I have the old Echo and the sound is terrific and they say the sound on the new ones are, it's Dolby Digital. You know, so I mean, I think well, I'm uh, uh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> you know why I'm happy for you that you've got that kind of fuck you money. <laughs> well, it was either that or put everything together on my own, and every and you know having Morant's talking to you know a set of speakers, and then having it talk to a mixer, and then then doing the yeah. whole thing. It's really difficult to do all that, and then to add the new technology to it. Uh, it was just too much. So this is going to allow me to uh, put my center speaker up without a problem, and it's going to allow me to run my 4K, my Apple 4K, which will allow me to run my music. It'll allow me to run my add-ons like the Hulu and the Netflix, and then all the rest of that. So 
it's going to be running the entire house until the electricity goes out because of an EMP pulse because of Trump. So yeah, 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 yeah. Until that, until that air raid warning is for real in Hawaii. Okay. This poor guy, he's getting so he's been fired, and I feel bad because so number one is people have more more than one news source that you check. Really. Have more than one. Whether you're on vacation or not, please have more than one. But this poor guy got fired. Now he has to get an attorney because he's getting harassed by everybody online. And it's been and Well they the release thing, did he release his name or did they release his name? They release his name because it's a government entity. But oh, the oh, issue geez. is that here's the deal. We screwed up. That's great. But we now know all the things we didn't know before because we didn't have a clue what to do. We didn't have a clue of where to go. We didn't have a clue of who well, to you, trust. Well, you, you, know, you didn't have a clue of how flexible you were in kissing your ass goodbye. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you know what? If they would have pulled that on a Monday morning, I think people would have been like <laughs> off the charts. You know, whatever happened to this casual Hawaiian lifestyle where people don't panic, you know? Uh, everything well, so so exactly. don't worry don't don't worry we're 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 gonna survive no problem you know and then all of a sudden it's like yay and they were all going crazy well what i feel bad about because this is so did that by the way did that only hit honolulu or or rather the uh, you know oahu or did the, so so you you got that alert too yeah absolutely. And, and how did you react to it I, t I I went, the first thing I did is I went to the bathroom. The second thing I did is came back to my computer, took a deep breath, started checking other sources. So I went to CNN, I went to NORAD, I went to, uh, the Emer I went to the local television station. I just kept going down the line until, you know, somebody's talking about the stuff that I'm, I needed to get information on. But, you know, if this thing is launched, everybody's going to know about it. Yeah. So... It's not going to be a secret. That's for that's for freaking sure. Because as soon as it's launched, I'll give you about 15 minutes before CNN is broadcasting a missile strike in, in somewhere in the United States. It, it, it will be within less than that 15-minute time frame. Well, you know, we it. should have learned from Orson Welles. Because when he did War of the Worlds, everybody said... Well, how come nobody was checking all the other radio stations to see if they were covering the same thing? Yeah, uh, that's true. And, and what happened was, if you ever listened to the Orson Welles broadcast, yes, the beginning of it was very convincing, but it started out with an announcer saying, and now it's uh, the Mercury Theater on the air, blah, 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 blah. Tonight we're doing H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds. And then they, you know... They did the thing where there was music playing, and then they say we interrupt this program. And they do the the first half of the show is that, but the second half of the show is a dramatic thing about a guy who is kind of run away from all of this and is hiding from the Martians, and it's a drama, and yet nobody seemed to be listening to that part of it. But they were just panicking over the first half of it. And nobody turned to another station to see if the other networks had it because obviously every network would have it, right? Yeah. No. Everybody would know. And, and so consequently, <laughs> consequently, people were like, you know, packing their kids up and driving away and, you know, yeah, doing all it was, kinds it, of things. You know what? They, they didn't. And the people are still really angry because National Public Radio here is playing everybody's, everybody's fears and talking about what happened. But the point is, is that instead of being mad, we need to figure out where we're, where our asses should be. You know, can we fix this? Can we hide? Can we find a place? Is it a chemical attack? Don't breathe. Do we need to duct tape the room? You know, the whole thing. Nobody. It, so there's very little people. To, there's very few talking about that, and they're really putting this guy on a, a spit and just barbecuing the crap out of him. Well, I mean, I hear this guy actually made the same mistake several times before, but it didn't get as far as being broadcast. That he he he, he 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 but. When he fucked up before, they should have, like, said adios, but they didn't, you know. I don't think, you know, I don't, I don't, because they practice this drill, according to them, they practice this drill over and over and over again for the time. So 
I don't know what he was well, thinking well, on Saturday morning that it was coming, but <laughs> what, what I want, what I want to know, what I want to know with this guy, and I thought about this the other day, is of course nobody's ever going to hire him for that kind of job again. But what nope. kind of job was it, and how did he get it? Well, it had to be okay. So according to what I know, yeah. It's a Hawaii state government job. Okay. And what? And so he was a, a state employee, and it's the emergency management system, the Hawaii version of the emergency management system, which has had many redos. But this particular Hawaii, the reason Hawaii's got its own, is, of course, is because we're in the middle of nowhere, and we, we need to know. And after World War II, this became very important. So we crack, we have air raid signs going off. Yeah, but, but well, all I know is what it was the job category that he had that put him in this position, and how did he get it? Why, you want one too? No, I don't want the job, no, no. Well, you know, it is a broadcasting job uh, right. <laughs> of sorts, you know. I don't I don't think it was, I mean, I, it was bad, but I think everybody figured okay, out. Okay, but what does he do, now the question this. is, what does he do for his next job? No, man, he's going to be working at, at Wendy's. Or and when he goes in for that job, even to Wendy's, and they ask him, what did you do before this? <laughs> or or do you have any, do you have any references? There you go. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, Patrick. Actually, he should work at McDonald's because they fuck up orders left and right. Very good, uh, very that good. That would be a perfect job. And he can work on the microphone there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Number 22, I mean 20, 21, thank you. Uh, you know. Well, and let's talk about this for a second because they were talking about it. Patrick, this is a big deal because the people like Patrick that are in wheelchairs that are on a bus and they figured it out, it takes an average of 10 minutes to get a wheelchair person off of the bus. Now, what if you have four wheelchair persons, that's 40 people, and they're like, well, what do we do with these people? And then the first thought is to take them back to the main hub, where they at least will be safe, but those people didn't want to go to the main hub, those people wanted off the bus. So it, 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 has, it showed a whole bunch of flaws, which we have to thank this guy for. Y yes, Patrick. One of the things that hit home and, and is a reality for me mm -hmm. is we have tornadoes here in Wisconsin. That's a good point. And they, the recommendation is if you do not have a basement, you go into the innermost room of the home mm -hmm. or bathroom, get into the bathtub, and cover yourself with like a mattress or something like that. Well, I don't have a basement here. So even if I did, I would have to have one of those stair climber sort of deal or oh, whatever. Yeah. Okay, don't run on electricity. So I would need, let's say a generator, okay? But the reality is when a tornado is coming, you, you get about 10 minute notice, maybe. Um, I've just, I just realized that with a tornado, I'm fucked. I mean, I'll go in my bathroom, but I can't get in the tub because I'd never get out. You know, that sort of thing. And the other, the other fun thing that is a reality for me mm -hmm. is if my apartment or house or whatever would ever catch fire, I was in bed, I'm pretty much screwed because I would need to get into the wheelchair and if the fire is outside of my bedroom, I would need to get out of the room but I'd be going into the fire. So then you'd say, well, what about breaking a window in the bedroom? That's a good idea. However, it's higher than what I can climb. So all I can do at that point is start breathing in the smoke and hope to pass out from smoke inhalation and have a quick death. I, I do. I do. You know? Well, our, our guy Forbin, who writes all the time, said, could Phil defeat a tornado with all his hot air? 
Suck all the energy. Hey, hey, Ray Renati's joined us, by the way, in case you're wondering hey, folks. who that uh, handsome actor looking type guy is there. <laughs> Thanks, so, Alan. Patrick, you need one. So, what we have, if you have a two story house, this comes up all of the time. Yeah. Um, how to get out of the bedroom safely. And a lot of people have rope ladders that they just store in a part of the room where you could actually make a rope or you could have a rope where you lower the actual wheelchair down first, but you'd never be able to get it open. (laughs) No, no, the the wheelchair doesn't collapse that way. Oh, okay, good. Take it apart in pieces um, and put it together in pieces. And if you're interested, there's a video on my Facebook page in one of the albums, you can see me doing it. Okay. Um, so, for me to, because I live by myself, for me to put the chair on a rope and throw it out the window would mean I'd have to be out of the chair. Yep. Which then puts me on the floor. Yep. Now I'm supposed to lift a 40 or 50 pound wheelchair up over my head mm-hmm. and out the window. I'm just, I've, I've come to terms where if, if there's well, going to be a fire. I'm going to die in it. it and yeah. I'll, I'll just inhale the smoke. Have you come to terms, Patrick, with the fact that you just fucked? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was in a car accident um, oh, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And I ended up in a ditch. And I was, uh, I hit black ice. And I ended up in the ditch, and the uh, front end of the car was down, yeah. and just sideways, um, and sideways in a sense that the driver's side was more above me, you know, the, the door. Yeah. So I couldn't get the door open. The wheelchair is below me, just um, for perspective, and my cell phone was on the floor on the passenger side and I couldn't get to it. So, I mean, you know, there, there are just certain things that you realize that when you're paralyzed, you're fucked. But, you know, the good, the good thing about that is that accident could have been so bad that it would paralyze you, but in your case, it wouldn't do anything. I was already paralyzed, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somebody came by and I was able to, uh, you know, some cop got me out of the, yeah. out of the car and that. But, you know, I mean, there's just reality that I have to deal with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just talk about, like you said, with, uh, you know, tornadoes and, and weather-related things, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and I think I have to go with that, too, being on an island. I mean, it, we're close. And I do believe that North Korea has already developed something that will make it to California. So, Tom, you're up. <laughs> But um, I believe I believe we're first in line, <laughs> being so much closer than anywhere else. Thank Don't you. Two. One will go to one will go to Hawaii, and the other one will loop over to San Francisco. Oh, there you go. But you know who can I, knock them both out of the sky? Hmm. Um, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Mr. Tesla. Uh, oh, Elon, Elon, Elon Musk. Musk could just shoot him right at both out of the sky. Yeah. You, 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 you know something? I, I heard something today. It costs cost them to develop it, okay, from beginning to end, through all the rockets they had to send up and all the testing and all of that, $500 million. Okay? That rocket that they sent up cost $90 million. Do you know how much it's cost NASA to do the same exact thing? They're spending billions. You know. One thing they've been they've been spending that money for, from from the fifties. I mean, the only reason that uh, no, that, but on uh, projects that, they're working on now, they're spending billions. Well, <laughs> he's taking advantage of the money that they've been spending. Well, I he, mean, yes, but but what I'm saying is, I, are they going to take? They, uh, here's what they said. They said they consider themselves willing partners with Elon Musk, that yes. Musk is benefiting from them. I mean, he's using their launch pad, but he, I'm right. sure he pay. I'm sure he pay. I'm sure he pays for it, you yeah. know. Uh, but they, he, they, he's using their launch pad. 
uh, and they say that they they kind of feel like they're in business with him. You know, well, and, and I dis picture. I disagree because I think NASA has been moving so slowly. I mean, this is this was a pure whim getting this rocket up and doing what they've done. I mean, not only, I mean, I said yesterday, I said the wonderful thing was watching it take off. And if Tony, uh, not Tony, but uh, Patrick disagrees with me on all of this. Uh, but he has a different attitude about it. But the fact that they were able to send that rocket up, and it's a beautiful looking rocket too, that nice flatness that, uh, look that it has. And then they lose the, you know, the uh, the uh, they jettison the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, booster rockets, and you think, oh, that's the end of the game. The thing just goes up, and you keep watching it go up. No, these two things come back and land, and that was like I, th I think that was the part nobody was expecting. Simultaneously landed. It was at the beautiful. same exact time. The same exact time. It almost looked. I said to somebody last night. It almost looked like you took a, a North Korean rocket launch and just reversed the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It, it was gorgeous. And you know what? We're not. We're not celebrating it enough. And we're not celebrating the fact that um, it took a crap load of brain power. And, and those people that were there that were watching the event, I'm hoping that those people were the SpaceX people because I, I, we I, need I, to I, put I, more stem. I, I think you could say brain power. I'm going to say a better word, okay? And I think that's what this one took, ingenuity. Because what they did was manage to simplify the entire process. Yeah, but you, you couldn't have slimmed that down without massive amount of brain power yeah massive amount but the fact that that nose cone opened up and what is yeah. now the front of that rocket is a tesla, tesla <laughs> with a dummy in it and a, and the gps has a sign that reads don't panic <laughs> and they're playing and david bowie a space oddity and hopefully that part of the trip will keep going. And they, it turns out now they get, did a bad trajectory and they're not going to get to Mars, but they are going to go through the asteroid belt. Well, I was thinking you should call up one of these carjacking companies and ask them to trace your car because it got stolen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And see, and see what they say. I, I, wonder, I wonder if, if Musk, as a joke, put anything in the trunk we don't know about. Well, I mean, putting your car on the on the front of a, a, a rocket is a pretty good joke. You, ha you have to admit, that is pretty stellar. Yeah, but I mean, the way in which they did it, too, because if you saw the photographs, I mean, you almost think, you almost it's think not. it isn't for real. Yeah. Because, but, but there's the earth in back of it, and this, this dummy in the front seat of this Tesla with the earth going by. I think his name is... Starman, right? Something like that. Yeah. 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 What did you What did you think? I didn't get your take on it, Ray, yet because you weren't here yesterday. I, I only saw the takeoff, and then I stopped watching it because I assumed there was no landing. Um, so now I got to watch. You know, I just assumed it would be like the oh, NASA. Oh, thing you missed you missed, you missed the the what can we call it? the curtain call. Yeah, I'm gonna have to <laughs> you know? watch that part because I as soon as I saw it go out of sight, I said, "Oh, okay, that was cool," but I didn't realize there was part two. What I um, did is I didn't watch it take off. I had the TV on and it did happen, and then I went, "Oh, I missed it," so I ran it back because it had been on the station, and it ran back. And I sat there and watched the whole thing. When I saw those two other rockets land, I went, "Okay, I'm sold." You know. Yeah, I got. I got to check that out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and you should watch the whole thing because then they talk about Elon Musk's Tesla that he just shot into space. Yeah, yeah I read Don't, about that. I didn't know there was a Tesla yeah. in it when I was watching it. I thought it, it was pretty. They cool. actually had a camera mounted on on the other end yeah. of the car so they could see the yeah. so on the front end of the vehicle. I think you can look back. But, but at you the, know, he, he, uh, oh, hi to John Rockwell. Are you there, John? Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Turn on your camera. I, I, I only see my uh, I see a still picture here, but I guess I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> do you have it? Do you have Do you have your camera turned on? Yes, I do. Turn it off and turn it back on. Let's. Oh, see. wait a minute. No, I. I there you go. There, go. 
There we go. Uh, there, there, there's that That's handsome it. man. Anyway, um, uh, did you see it yesterday, Tom, at all? Any of it? Uh, not live. I, I watched videos afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, I'll probably watch it again. Esen um, essentially, that's what I did. You can also go to Tesla. Dot, uh, not Tesla, but uh, SpaceX.com, and they have a lot of the videos of the takeoff and and, uh, and all of that. And did you see it, John? You know what? I need to look up something. John? Now he's frozen. Uh, well, we lost John. He was frozen there. Uh, I just, you know, I'll tell you. In my lifetime, uh, uh, there have been certain seminal moments that I said, this is, it, this is a seed change in human history. And the last time that happened was when we landed on the moon. I yeah. said, this is a seed change. Now we have left the cradle. And the thing was that we just never went back. We never it took that point and moved beyond it. You know, getting to the moon was simply to learn everything we needed to know about space travel. But now we should have used that to go somewhere else. And I figured the next, next step was we were going to make a, a, a giant move towards Mars. And, so cool. and we never did. We never did. Um, Elon Musk said that well, they, will, they will never get to Mars in his lifetime. He thinks his company can take us to Mars. And that when they do, he wants his ashes scattered over Mars. Oh, how cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so on the note of immigrants into the United States. Yes. First off, you guys all know about Steve Jobs, right? But let's go on. Elon Reeves Musk, and I'm getting this from Wikipedia, so I apologize. South African-born Canadian-American business magnate. So he's he's an immigrant. Yeah. He didn't do this. Mm -hmm. So Trump, and, and to hear Trump praise, it, he texted something out, but it's like, you wouldn't have let him in, asshole. And he, also, also, Musk doesn't like him. Musk was on that, that initially on that uh, committee that he put together of tech oh, yeah. people, and he dropped out saying he didn't want any part of, of, of yeah. Trump. Uh, well, you know, real CEOs don't want anything to do with Trump. He's not, as, he's not accountable to all of the people that a CEO should be accountable for. Yeah. Or to. Yeah. yeah, he's real. So can we, speaking of the jackass, may I pivot a little bit? You should go right ahead and talk about the jackass. Everybody loves to talk about the jackass. Let's talk about our military parade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's, that. that, that, so, that's a good, to, that's a good solid topic, the military parade. Okay, so has anybody heard what date, see, my problem is, is the United, or the Democratic uh, the DNC isn't labeling this correctly. Trump said that he wants a military parade just like or, or like the one he saw in France on Bastille Day. Now, mm -hmm. Bastille Day, for everybody should know this, is their Independence Day f oh. in, from World War II or one. No, two. from the no, no, no it's from, no. It's from the, the revolution, the French Revolution, when they. Oh freed the people from the, the 12 prisoners in the Bastille. <laughs> so, there were 12 people. Oh, oh there's John. Okay, there's even, John. Even yeah, I got frozen out. out somehow. I don't know what's going on. It was symbolic, on. though. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway so, no, but wait a minute, wait a minute. He, well, he said he liked on the, on, uh, the Bastille Day parade. Bastille Day is a historical parade, Stop much like you maybe have the Thanksgiving Day parade or the right. whatever parade. It is not a parade of military might as much as it is celebrating Bastille Day. So it has nothing the to do with military might. Yeah. Right. So the, exactly. So the DNC needs to be saying, this is not like Bastille Day. This is, and then they should have pictures of Korea, North Korea's tank military tank parades, and then Russia's military tank parades, because this is not what Bastille Day was for. It's not a celebration. He Mussolini's wants, military tank parades. Right. So he's trying to just, he's well, just no, doing uh, my what, what, what happens if you look, if you look at the Russian parade, you look at the China, at the uh, at the North Korean parades and so on. They are a parade parading military might saying fuck you to the rest of the world that we're going we're going to fuck you over if you fuck with us. 
And that's uh, what Trump uh, wants. Uh, uh, Patrick. Oh, my God. Patrick. Yeah. I mean, our country does have a history of doing parades like that. Um, after World War II, uh, after Desert Storm, we did the same thing. We did one after uh, Desert Storm. That was the last one we did. No, we right. had and tanks yeah. running through the street up Broadway. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> right after uh, the Gulf War. We had a parade up Broadway in Manhattan. There was a parade of troops. Yeah. But that was Wait, because exit. the war was over. You know, it was a whole different thing. Yeah, there was a purpose. There was a purpose to it. It's not like it, it's Monday, let's hold a parade. You know, which is the same. Trump wants the parade for himself. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the DNC needs to be saying this is not a parade of celebration and then put up the Russian photos or put up the Chinese photos showing them that this is a military might issue and not a celebration issue. Yes. Because they're completely different. Patrick? Republicans should be saying the same thing. Oh, absolutely. There's, That's a good there's point. no reason for this. I mean, the reason I brought up the other one were specifically what John said were they were a celebratory parade ending a war, which I don't have any problem with. You can roll an Abram tank down the street uh, for a parade after a war, that's great. But um, just to have a military parade to have a parade is exactly yeah. the same as what the Russians do, the North Korean, the Chinese. Um, I don't even I, know. I don't even know that I, the Ch I don't know that the Chinese do it anymore. What do you mean? I don't. I, Same with Iran. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of the powers that. Dictators. You know, they're showing their might. They're saying, here's what we own. This is what we can kill you with. Uh, this is the stuff. Here's the thing with Trump and with this I whole whole thing. It, it would be very nice uh, if, uh, to begin with, if you, if you remember the ones that happened after a war, what you're celebrating is the war is over. There is no more war. We are celebrating mm -hmm. peace. Okay? This is celebrating might. And that's wrong. That's just wrong. Well, there's what, yeah, what, 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 what? generals that have been coming out against this idea. Yeah, Ray, and Ray, it, big guys. Ray, did you have something you were saying? Going to say? I, I just said it, it. It's so sad to me and disgusting. It just remind. It's. Uh, I hate using this word, but I've seen so many things that he's done lately that are so Hitler esque. Uh, not that he'd be able to get to that point, but it's it's almost like he's taking out of the playbook of the greatest uh, um, despots in history and uh, trying to do some of the things they did. I think he doesn't realize that's what he's doing. I just I think that that's what he's doing by just his own personal nature. Yeah, and it, maybe it's somewhere in his subconscious that he saw the videos and stuff. And, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's horrible. John has his hand up. John. Yeah, well, I just saw something online where, where now I guess some of the Republicans or someone are starting to say, well, you know, we could do a parade. But let's do it on Veterans Day. You know, we'll wait till November after the after the midterm elections. So it won't be, you know, a big uh, political thing. Yeah, I don't think that's what Trump wants. <laughs> you know? Everybody else could deal with it. And it's not bad to have a Veterans Day parade. But in fact, somebody said that on one of the channels, some general yesterday said, you know, most soldiers really hate parading, marching along. They have enough they have to deal with, but yeah. marching a couple of miles, you know, to, you know, yes, we love you, but, you know, we're going to make you march up up, up Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, you know, there are more things you could do that are better for them than that to, yeah. to honor them, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, Tony. Like, yeah, you know what? Something strange happened. I was in key food, right? And I was just checking out, and there was an older guy in front of me. I would say he had to be in his uh, maybe late 60s, if I had to guess. And he seemed normal. And I just was trying to check those. And something like she meant she was giving him his change back or something, the cashier. And he mentioned, like, oh, Uncle Donald's going to take care of him. But I, like, he's tapped into something, Trump. I don't know what it is. Like, I never had that. Uh, person mentioned the president like at a checkout counter at a supermarket <laughs> i mean it's like you know what he, though do, is I, he I, tapping into a hatred no, I, I, i'll I tell you what it. i'll tell you what he's doing it's something they used to call jingoism 
In mm. other words, this the, they're, they're meaningful. They're meaningful, th- meaningless things you do to pretend like you're patriotic. You know, uh, I, I, you know. The, My I, country, I, right? Or I get wrong. a little tired of every politician lately wearing the American flag on his lapel. I mean, oh, any t- these are things anybody can do. I'll tell you what not anybody can do. What not anybody can do is be forced to go into a war like Vietnam and be forced to be over there and and fight it and somehow come back alive, okay? That's not jingoistic, and you don't have to wear a flag pin on your lapel or whatever. Any idiot can put a flag pin on their lapel, and that's jingoistic. Uh, Living, uh, putting yourself in a position of great castigation because you stand up for the ideals you believe and the ideals you believe are the ideals of America is is a brave, patriotic action. But putting a fucking flag in your lapel isn't because any moron can put a flag in their lapel. Um, that's why, why I say that jingoism bothers me because it's... How can I put it? It's it, it it it's just not genuine. Tom, do you have any thought about what I just said? Oh, I thoroughly agree with you. And 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 to wrap this up and say uh, that this is to honor the vets by having a display of hardware. I mean, what does hardware have to do with the with the with the people who are fighting and and the veterans? I mean, it's it's we already have uh, parades of. Uh, for the, to honor the people who served in the military, yeah. and this is totally useless and a waste of money. And they're to, we forgot to mention that this we're, they're talking about twenty two million dollars, and even more if if there's if there's going to be uh, you know like the Blue Angels, you know like the like uh, jet fly over it. It's going to be even more than that. But see, that's a very good point. They cut back a few of the cities that the jets were, the Blue Angels and the other jets were allowed to fly into. If you wanted to celebrate our military, let's pump the money into the the $22 million into this so those jets can go to more and more cities so that we can celebrate them per city, not some jackass event in D.C. Patrick has his hand up. Patrick. Yeah, and I mean, the money, I I almost puked when I heard what it's going to cost to do that sort of thing for no result. But the other thing that, that I, I keep thinking of is you're putting all of these troops and all of this hardware mm-hmm. on display and somehow it has to be protected. So then you're going to have either whatever police force and military police having to protect the same ship and yeah. you know, like if the twenty-two million dollars is an actual figure, Renee has a good idea there. You can send the Blue Angels and the um, um, yeah, the right. You send them around to the different stadium. That right. or take the twenty-two million dollars and invest it into the VAs mm-hmm. and uh, help the veterans that way rather than. Yeah. Parade that showed absolutely nothing. By the Medical way, we, ha- we have no we're, 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 support. We're, you know, absolutely. things that help the troops. Yeah, Thunderbirds. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I just think it, it, well, Ray has his hand up. Ray, yeah. you talk. First. Does anybody know the process for this? I mean, would Trump unilaterally be able to decide that we're doing a parade and that's it? We're doing a parade, or does there have to be some sort of decision-making process that? People well, a, a Mad Dog Mattis, the uh, uh, our our head of the uh, military, uh, our Secretary of Defense, together, right? uh, said that he was all for it. He thinks it's a great idea. But you yeah. know what is it? It's it's a PR. The generals it, don't it, though. <laughs> no, yeah, it, the it, it, it's, like... it's a PR day for war, is what it is. You well, know, yeah, I I, I think I, I think that what it what it talks about is war. If you did something that engendered peace, which, of course, after a war is over when you have that kind of parade, it's celebrating peace. It's celebrating a calm. Uh, but this is simply, literally, uh, lionizing war. And, and I, I, while, I, you know, they say, well, you know, we honor the military. People go, 
we thank you for your service. Well, I, you know, you can thank me for my service. I did two years. Thank me for my service. But the fact was, I went into the Navy to keep from going into the Army because they were drafting people, okay? So don't thank me for my service. Thank me for my raging cowardice. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, uh, first of all, Patrick, and then John. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to know, after Desert Storm, we had... Clinton, then we had um, George W., mm -hmm. then we had Obama, yeah. and none of them, all, well, all of them were involved in some sort of conflict and or wars, and we never had to show our military might on the street, whether it be in D.C., whether it be in New York City, in San Francisco, L.A., wherever, we've never needed to do that. Now, all of a sudden, we have to do it. Why? It, 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 who, who, my button's bigger than your button. My button's bigger than your button. My military's bigger than your military. Mm -hmm. This guy obviously has a small dick. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, right, right. goes with the hands. Yeah. <laughs> who did who I read? To, who did I read today? Who said they knew? They knew Trump when, and it's somebody famous. And they knew him back when and just always felt he was a complete moron, not particularly intelligent. Mm. Uh, uh, you know. Probably a few of those guys out yeah, there. Yeah, that, that this was not this was this is not the kind of person who's bright enough to be president of the United States. Mm. But yeah. then again, who voted for him? People that are not bright enough to be president of the United to States. Know who either. To know who to vote for. Him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, he was on TV. I think I'll vote for him. You know, he's good with the other, money. Yeah. The, the thing I also think is this is this is also a Trump slap at the Democrats along with with him saying with all the, the back and forth. Oh, you know, about about DACA and everything. Oh, the Democrats are are messing up the military because they're not allowing all this, uh, you know, our, our budgets to go through and all that. It's nothing. Else. Did, you know, did, I I've got the military. Did, did I'm going to show you yeah. know, those Democrats. Did you, did they, you see? You know, yeah. we're going to march the military around. These are the people that you're you're screwing over, which of course they're not. But it's still. You did you know. see what he did the other day? He talked about the people at the uh, at the State of the Union who didn't applaud him or stand up for him. Oh yes, yes and yes. referred to them as traitors. As really? traitors, he, he said it was a joke, but it, you could see him. Well, we could call him. No, traitors. he says, "Well, what should we call him?" And I think yeah. somebody I mean, out in the really audience said off, said still, traitors, and he says, he "Yeah, I'd yeah. call them traitors." Yeah, yeah. So I could tell you exactly what happened. So I watched it a bunch of times. If you want, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So he was. Uh, everybody showed it a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. So 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 somebody in the audience said, "Ah, they are treason." They're tre a tre they committed a treason, treason, and he goes, it. and he heard it, and he goes, treason. Yeah, sure, treason. Why not? I'll call Why it not? Yeah, <laughs> we'll call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, they totally. wouldn't stand no. up for him, because they wouldn't applaud for him. You know. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Since, uh, Patrick, then, uh, then John. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. John, John had his hand. Oh, did, did he have his hand oh, up first? A, okay. This is a quickie, actually. This is a quickie because I actually put this on my Facebook page. I think I did. Anyway, I was going to. I was going to. Um, we're talking about if if you know if if not applauding for your, for the president that the State of the Union speech is treason, then Paul Ryan back in 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 sixteen when Obama's last State of the Union he didn't he didn't applaud for two thirds of that all the way through that he should be in he should be in jail at this point. In fact, treason is punishable by death. Hello. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> still it, there. It, yeah, uh, it, it, yes, Patrick. Yeah, this, this treason thing is is horseshit, but. You, you, you brought up, you brought up. Um, I forget who it was. Uh, I think it was John with the with comparing DACA and then the military. Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of DACA, did the Pens hire Nancy Pelosi um, as their new spokesperson? Oh yeah, eight hours, right? <laughs> oh yeah. So right. there's no way sure. that that woman could have held a piss. I don't care <laughs> how she would be for her age. She was wearing fucking Depends, and she should be their next spoke person or on their bag to depend because oh. eight hours and seven minutes. Or a catheter. <laughs> yeah, or a catheter. But you know what? I say she's wearing astronaut Depends. <laughs> yeah. 
Not just depends, uh, but it has to. No, the last time a woman wore the uh, last time a woman wore those was when she was going from Texas to Florida to murder somebody. You remember that story? <laughs> oh yeah, right. I remember that? <laughs> so she wouldn't yeah. have to stop and pee. Um, it is, um, um, uh, and Tammy Duckworth hasn't had nice things to say either. But then again, she's cranky now. She's pregnant. But well, now, you know, hold on a second. Mm. She has the right to say what she said. Yeah. She said that she's not taking any information or orders or whatever it is from some five-time person or five-time deferment person. Right. Cadet and, bone spurs. Yes. Cadet bone spurs. Right? Cadet bone spurs. Great. I, 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 I love Tabby Duckworth for that. She came up with a great name for, for Trump. What was it? Cadet, Cadet, Cadet bone, oh, bone spurs. Cadet bone spurs. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't know she had said that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tammy Duckworth, in case people aren't aware, is a uh, is a woman who lost both both her legs, I think, in the war. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, she's uh, and she's a fighter pilot. That's she was. You yeah. Know, not doing navigation. She was the actual fighter pilot. Yeah. I mean, she's feisty. She's really feisty. Uh, yeah, she's gonna get, yeah, cadet bone spurs. I'm gonna start hashtag cadet bone spurs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> y yes, uh, John. Yeah, um, one of the one of the sites. I think it was New Yorker or Andy Borowitz or something like that did up a thing. I think it was today or yesterday yeah. that said the uh, um, soldiers have decided they said said to Trump that they're not going to be able to march in the parade because of the bones their their bone spurs. <laughs> it's just not going to be able to do it. You know? Sorry, we'd love to do it, but we have bone spurs, so we can't march. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Close enough. It's all good. What? You need I have to sign off because I got to walk pebbles. You got, pebbles. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, you've, yeah, you've only you've only got you, you've only got nine minutes left on the I show. So go, go, go walk. Go outside. go walk that sure. fucking mutt. Bye, Tony. Bye, pebbles. I got to go walk my dog. <laughs> yeah, walk my dog. We don't want that. You better walk the dog, or else it's going to go all over your floor. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, so, uh, uh, but uh, we have, we have, you know we have some pretty gutsy people out there. It's kind of kind of nice uh, mm -hmm. people who who are uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, not letting the king get away with what he wants to get away with. But he. He, you know, I think he has this concept, uh, and I, 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 to begin with, his lawyers are just absolutely frightened with him because mm. they don't want him, they prefer he not talk to Mueller voluntarily, <laughs> voluntarily, <laughs> voluntarily, uh, and they'd prefer to make a deal with Mueller before he deposes him because they know that no matter what they tell him, he's still not going to do it. He's just going to talk too much. Uh, and and uh, they're afraid that if he is allowed to talk, he will perjure himself. Absolutely, you know. he will. By the way, we've been joined by Bree. He's calling from Dubai, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Bree. How are you this morning? Yeah, I think take Tony's spot there. Yeah, I, I I I should say good morning because it is morning there, right? What time is it? Good morning. What time yes, is it? Yeah, it's uh, eight fifty-two in the morning. By the way, for the wow. guy who owns a lot of those Amazon gizmos, I bought myself the spot today. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I got the spot. It, Fifteen dollars on sale. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, one hundred and fourteen bucks now. And yeah, and it was it was real. It's really fun. It's you know the only thing I don't like about it is that the clock. I'd like the clock to be able to just stay on, but all those other little messages come up. Is there any way yeah. of stopping that? Yeah, yeah, you can. How do you do that? Is it, we'll just Google it. Google. I, I haven't set mine up yet. But, oh, uh, oh I, okay. I read that it was possible. Well, I have. I've read about it, but I can't find the switch to do it with. But anyway, <laughs> so, but but otherwise, yeah, I, I have the show. So you know it's what? Very it was? similar. It, well, I went. I went to sleep last night. Uh, I rather my wife went to sleep and turned off the lights, and the screen dims, so it doesn't yes. doesn't blind you at night. 
you know, it's just li- not it, only it, that, Alex, it will learn when your sleep times are. It learns it. Really? Damn, yeah, AI, because, AI is because <laughs> over here, yeah. uh, you know, my timings are different. So, but, but, but it still shows the, the East Coast time. Yeah. Yet it knows when to dim. It like it knows when I go to sleep, which would not be normal sleeping time on the East Coast, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Joe Biden uh, coming back in. Looks like he's going to be running. Yeah. Well, really? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Called, he called Trump a joke. Yeah. Well, well he, hold on. Didn't Joe Biden have like wandering hand problems? Well, I I've got a problem with well, Joe that's Biden. Well, a benefit nowadays. I've I've got a problem with with Joe Biden. He, he for touching women when he do, really close and hugging and mm, that's that's a a you know some people some people Renee are just touchy feely people. You know, I mean really. Well, I, I, I think I, if you're a touchy feely person and and you were a man in this yeah. particular time period, it's going to be a really tough thing to get over. You know, when I really like somebody, Except I think humping like their the leg is a wonderful thing to do as a sign of affection. No, just kidding. Right. Anyway, uh, but no, wait a minute. Wait, touchy oh. feely versus touchy creepy. You have to figure touchy out. Touchy creepy. The, where the, I, where the, my problem with Biden is, is I like Biden. I think Biden's terrific, but Biden, by the time he decides to run, what's it going to be? 78? He's going to be 78, yes. Yeah, that's a little old to run for president. I'm sorry. Yeah, not nowadays. Well, have we had anybody that old in a long time? We haven't had anybody. I don't. I think he would be the oldest president ever. Who was the oldest? I think it was Reagan, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. At the time of his election, pretty close, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess we shouldn't. We should say that because Reagan kind of lost it in those later years, that maybe. You know, you can't really run Joe Biden because we don't know how many of those four years will be actually you and instead of your doctor, Jill Biden. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think, uh, you know, I mean, I like Joe Biden, but uh, I I didn't know that there was any bad things about him that way. But, you know, who knows? Uh, Yes. uh, uh, Tom. Yeah, I, I really wish we would stop talking about a presidential election. That is three years, you know, yes. two years, yes. so three years. Yes. I am really getting sick of this. This keeps happening on and on. One presidential election, and we start to start talking about the next one and who the candidates and are. You know blah, 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 and you know blah, blah, something? Blah, you, blah, you, blah, blah, you want? You want? You, you, and and yes, exactly. We need to focus on the midterms, and we need to keep the, you know the media from distracting us. And that's what it is. They 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 love the, the media loves these kinds of distractions. Ouch. It's a place to a national audience. But but we've got you know, we've got Congress we, that we need to, to turn around before we mm-hmm. can even consider doing anything <laughs> more than that. Let the you know, let's talk about the presidential race starting next year, but let's forget it. And, and, and well, I'm but- just not gonna engage in any kind of conversation about who's running Who's not running for president? Well, uh, let me oh, let me let me add let me 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 add to that by saying that that any kind of wait a minute any kind of uh, uh, prognostication you want to make at this point is ridiculous because when <clears throat> Obama ran for president, nobody even thought of him at this point yet. You know. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't until about a year and a half before the election that he really jumped into it and people started maybe talking about him. So you can't tell what the field's going to be like uh, three years hence, and we shouldn't start talking about it yet, you know? And, because we're going to have another one of those two-year election cycles, and I hate that, you know? What we need is we need to have a thing where they say, hey, we don't hold primaries because that just costs the states a lot of money. You guys go to your corner. You guys go to your corner. You come out with your standard bearer. Let them run, and we'll have a six-month election cycle. Wouldn't yeah, that be yeah. nice? Alex, sort of like Britain. Canada, <laughs> yeah. Canada does the same thing, but we're too stupid to do that. And it's probably too late because Citizen United is still in play. That's right. That's right. But typically, you need to have somebody out in front who is leading the pack. So who's doing that for the Democrats right now? Uh, Nancy Pelosi? No, no. No, Pelosi's the Pelosi is going to be a big problem in in this in this uh, midterm election. They all everybody's saying that you know she's the 
she's the bad girl of the, uh, the, all the Republican uh, candidates are going to go after her and say, you know, the de- whoever the Democrat is, they're already they're already using they're already, the using, whatever, they're already they're using Pelosi's person. Okay, you know. the, they're already using her visage in ads all over the country, oh, everywhere. It, and they yeah, did last. Yeah. They didn't. In yeah. 16. And, uh, uh, you know, I quite frankly, I never thought she was that she's bad. She's a pariah I, uh, yeah. in that way. Even hey, though it, hey, I think yeah. she's perfectly lovely. Hey, but hey, listen, Alex, listen, the music's know. playing. What, what, Bree, did you have something quick to say? Now, I, I'd like everybody's opinion. Well, did two videos on YouTube. It's confusing me. I don't know if anybody else is confused. But you're okay. posting like the live feed and then the recorded feed. I was wondering if maybe oh, you could just. Do I one. do. Uh, the reason I do that, the, the difference is, is that the recorded the live show has all those promos at the beginning of the show hmm. and the other one doesn't okay it just starts off immediately with the show and that's why i have two versions of it up okay all right all right okay. is, is this so people don't that. have to scrub through it i gotta go hey listen tom yeah. great having you here especially with that new camera and everything you look terrific <laughs> Uh, Patrick, you look like a lobster doing that. Uh, <laughs> uh, John, thank you. Thank Renee you. from Hawaii, wonderful talking to you. Uh, Ray Renati, always love having you here. And, of course, Bree from uh, the wonderful uh, uh, Dubai. Uh, and I think everybody should wave Dubai or goodbye uh, to that audience out there. Yes, there they go, the lovely citizens panel. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Let me just uh, kill the uh, the feed here from Skype so the next show can use it. And uh, then I'll do my big goodbyes, which is to say that, you know, who's next? Yes, of course, Jack and Amy with the uh, insurrection. No, the intersection. And then uh, at 1 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time, it's uh, Connections. And then tomorrow at 9.30... Uh, Eastern Time. Of course, it's Damien. Uh, I'll see you again uh, tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.